Welcome to Lutheran Church of the Holy Spirit online, and thanks again for inviting us into your home. If you're one of the many people who have been inspired by this online ministry, I'd like to invite you to contact us so we know who you are. We are making plans for the coming year and would like to discover how we can better serve you, our online community. Also, if you're in the area, I'd like to invite you to backyard worship on Sunday mornings. This Sunday, we will gather at 10 a.m. You need to bring a chair, wear a mask, and remember to sign up online at lchscentennial.org. Zoom communion has been moved to 1130 on Sunday. If you don't know how to Zoom, call Sarah in the church office and she can help you. The Pumpkins are coming this Saturday, October 10th. This is a fundraiser for a number of different ministries here at Lutheran Church of the Holy Spirit. We need help unloading and we need help with encouragers for the unloaders. So if you are looking for a little fellowship and fun, watch for the email with specific information on arrival times this Saturday. And while you're here, you can pick up one of these stained glass art packets. Take it home and make your own creation. Many of these works of art will be decorating the windows here at church. We had a great confirmation and high school gathering this past Sunday. So if you have a student who's in 6th, 7th, or 8th grade, they are invited to participate in our Faith Discipleship Discovery Confirmation Ministry. They meet the first and the third Sundays at 6 o'clock, and the senior high also meet on the first and the third Sundays at 7 o'clock. All Saints Sunday is upon us, November 1st, and we have a tra tradition here of remembering those who have gone before us, the saints in our lives. If you would like someone's name read during this service, please call the church office or email the church so we can include these names in our service that week. Thanks again for your faithful and generous giving to this ministry. We are also in the last quarter of the year, and next week we will know exactly what we need to do in the next couple of months to move into 2021 without a negative balance. Thanks in advance for the financial abundance that you will bring to this ministry. Now I invite you to light a candle as a visible sign of the Holy Spirit's presence in our midst and in the world in which we are called to serve. Kind of changing our format, and for the next seven weeks, we will ponder the cup as a symbol of our inner journeys. For these meditations, we're going to be using Joyce Rupp's The Cup of Our Life, a guide for spiritual growth. I encourage you to find a cup that has meaning for you, Maybe pour a warm beverage in it at this time and use this time as a break for everything else that takes up your days. The ordinariness of the cup reminds us that personal transformation is often not some grand affair. Rather, transformation happens in the common crevices of each day. The cup is a reminder of our physical and our spiritual thirst. There's nothing like cradling a warm cup in cold hands, holding it close, and being comforted by its warm liquid. Whatever our cups hold, it eventually has to be emptied so that something more can be poured in. Joyce Rupp writes, I have learned that I cannot always expect my life to be full. There has to be some emptying, some pouring out, if I am to make room for the new. The spiritual journey is like that, a constant process of emptying and filling, of giving and receiving, of accepting and letting go. Our theme, Our theme for today is the perfect cup. Ah, how we long for perfection, and if achieved, our lives would be much less interesting. Let us pray. It is time for me to see the flaws of myself and stop being alarmed. It's time for me to halt my drive for perfection and to accept my blemishes. It is time for me to receive slowly evolving growth 
kind that comes in God's own good time and pays no heed to my panicky pushing. It is time for me to embrace my humanness, to love my incompleteness. It is time for me to cherish the unwanted, to welcome the unknown, to treasure the unfulfilled. If I wait to be perfect before I love myself, I will always be unsatisfied and ungrateful. If I wait until all the flaws, chips, and cracks disappear, I will be the cup that stands on the shelf and is never used. Amen. A meditation from the book, The Cup of Our Life. Anne Lamont writes, perfectionism is the voice of the oppressor, the enemy of the people. It will keep you cramped and insane your whole life. Joyce writes, I was guiding the retreat of a clergyman and the days were powerful for him. He had slowly come to terms with who he was, a person full of strengths and weaknesses who was deeply loved by God. As our time together came to a close, I decided to give him a cup as a reminder of the emptying and the filling days of his retreat. At the gift shop, a large white cup with many red hearts on it caught my eye, and as I picked it up, I noticed that the handle had a chip in it. I immediately thought, oh, too bad. This would have been just right for him. I set the cup down, but then I suddenly realized that this was exactly the right one for him. He had finally begun to let go of his belief that he had to be perfect before God could love him. The beautiful cup with the chip could daily remind him of his new realization. Scripture scholars point out that the verse be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect, has been translated inaccurately. The actual text reads, be whole as God is whole. Wholeness implies a process, a gradual coming together into a oneness in which all the parts are integrated, but not necessarily perfect. Wholeness or holiness takes a lifetime of ups and downs. It can never be accomplished apart from divine help and guidance or without the interaction of our lives with others. When we put most of our focus on our faults and our flaws, we tend to give most of our energy to this. Louise Hayes comments, we need to stop criticizing ourselves because criticism doesn't help. It just keeps us stuck in our problems. When we get sucked into constant self-criticism, we lose our perspective and forget our goodness. We also lose sight of the fact that God, that it is God who helps us to grow. When the goal is to be perfect, we can thrash around in our flaws and forget about loving others and sharing our gifts with them. We allow the desire to be perfect to oppress us and keep us in the bondage of self-preoccupation. The focus becomes me, and the effort becomes trying to perform perfectly. Notice what you accept and what you reject about yourself and others. Be aware of your ex expectations and how much does being perfect influence your attitude and action. At this time, we take a little time to breathe. Breathe in that you are loved, loved. And breathe out, you are loved as you are. I am loved as I am. As you hold your cup in your hands, study the cup. Are there any flaws or imperfections? Enjoy the cup for itself, its color, its shape, its size, its handle, or its
its decorations. Close your eyes and picture yourself in God's hands. See God observing you. Let God see your blemishes and faults. Imagine God smiling and enjoying all of who you are. Psalm 139, for it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you for I am wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. Take some time to journal. This could be a good time to turn off the video or you can wait until after and take a little time to yourself. Here are some prompts. Make a list of your expectations of yourself and of others. Write a dialogue between God and the parts or part the part or parts of yourself that you struggle to accept. Then finish the sentence. Dear God, when I picture you smiling, enjoying who I am, I... You may actually want to follow these different practices for a couple, two or three days after viewing this video, and maybe even come back to view this video again, the presentation of that story. You might hear something different. Let's pray. Dear God, a long time ago I learned that you never made junk. You created me as a human person whose journey of life is the path to wholeness. This journey needs room for growth and space for evolving discovery. Each day is another opportunity to receive your help and your love as I become the person I'm meant to be. Help me to love myself well and to entrust my growth to your guidance. Remind me often that I am wonderfully made. Amen. Amen. A challenge for today and the days ahead. How can you not criticize yourself and others? How can I make a pledge I will not criticize or find fault in myself or others? When we stop expecting people to be perfect, including ourselves, we can like them for who they are. We can love ourselves for who we are. Thank you. Today's hymn comes from, is uh, Light Dawns on a Weary World. It's new for us too. It comes from Mary Louise Briggle and the tune is written by William P. Rowan. This is one of those collaborations where the tune came first, and on hearing the tune, the words flowed forth. The lyrics are inspired by passages from Isaiah 55, 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. Mary Louise Bringle is Professor of Philosophy and Religious Studies and Chair of the Humanities Division at Brevard College in North Carolina. A teacher at heart and a theologian by training, she began writing hymn texts in 1999. Since that time, she has won a number of international hymn writing competitions and been featured as an emerging text writer by the Hymn Society in the U.S. and Canada. William Rowan is a graduate of Southern Illinois University and the University of Michigan. He serves as Director of Music Ministries at St. Mary Cathedral in Lansing, Michigan, and is the liturgical consultant for the Diocese of Lansing. Rowan is the composer of many published hymn tunes, anthems, and organ works. His hymn settings have been sung at hymn festivals throughout the United States, Great Britain, and Europe and are included in many recent hymns. Oh, 
Bless you and guide you always. Amen. 